Well, it's seven o'clock, the sun's going down and it's nearly bedtime. And there's not a thing. We've ridden 300 yards off the road. My tent, bike. Say hello, Derek. Settled down for the evening, watching the sun slowly go down and then had a, a comfortable night in the wilderness of Gambia. Morning all, so it's now morning in the Gambia, it's a quarter past seven in the morning. So we packed up our tents, we rough slept tonight um, about 200 metres off the main road. We're, we had to turn around from the ferry yesterday, which I think I may have mentioned because it just never turned up. So we're now going to try and make our way to the very eastern point, which is the uh, furthest point of Gambia, and out of the border back into Senegal, um, and then make our way to uh, the border with Guinea. So hopefully that will all go well, but as usual, you're dealing with all these corrupt officials. It really is a pain in the backside, and they do my head in now. But anyway, um, two borders to deal with, so not really looking forward to that. Um, but there we go, so um, we'll report in later. So part of our early morning start this morning in uh, Gambia. Um, it was we're shooting up to try and get to the borders, you know, to Senegal again. Uh, which I'm not looking forward to, but here we are at a river crossing. Hurrah! Hopefully this ferry, we might just see in the distance, it's only a short one, so it might actually come back and pick us up. So we only actually had to wait a short while before this ferry arrived. And there you can see it there. And uh, in no time at all, uh, both Paul and I were on board and I managed to break out the sunglasses, I think for the first time. And then we set off across the Gambia River, which uh, is approximately 700 miles long, um, spanning the length of Gambia. And then I was caught out. Can you won't guess where Derek's about to go on his bike. The seat is on, <laughs> and he's desperate. You lost your keys now, haven't you? So I've now sent him to the next tree. <laughs> so, just got through the border with uh, Gambia and back into Senegal. And having dealt with all that um, into mid-afternoon, having left a wild camp, unfortunately I was caught a little short. Happy days. We have our Acme toilet seat. How liberating and works a treat. After having a close shave with Mother Nature, we set off again and things started to look distinctly more African, for want of a better word. And uh, it really felt now that we were moving deeper into West Africa um, and the local surroundings and the villages um, really gave us more of a sense of adventure.
and dealt with a number of boarders. We pulled up at a petrol station, filled up and then realised we didn't have enough local currency. At which point this elder, um, who I think was a local village chief, pulled up on his pride and joy and inquired what the issue was with the petrol pump attendant and then simply said, it's not a problem. And he offered and paid for the outstanding value on our behalf. Just unbelievable. And yet again, a clear example of how friendly people are in West Africa. Africa. And uh, Paul decided to stop and take some pictures of the views and the trees. He likes taking pictures of trees for some reason. And uh, just for a change, he actually managed to get a picture of a cow. And then before long, we were back on the dirt and pummeling along.
that it's low. Once that's easy, I'm going to be driving through it. Uh, go go uh, left to the wagon pool. But I'm going to be driving through that. pulled over for a short break and uh, yeah you guessed it Paul got his camera out again and got some more snaps of the, the local terrain and of course that involved lots of pictures of trees and and a little bit further on down the line we managed to stop at a little road shack and grabbed uh, some fresh oranges and um, got a picture of a new friend that we met who, uh, who also enjoyed some of the orange with us before we eventually got to see how the local uh, taxi service works. of the way from where we set off this morning to a place called Kinder and the road which was tarmac with uh, umpteen potholes and then hopefully you'll see some video of that later some of it worse than others uh, it's been hard going um, and now we've got a really long stint um, 
I'm just looking at the end of the tall man. <laughs> and breakfast has consisted of a handful of miniature donuts and some water. I don't think they're Bavarian donuts, so really. Um, but I'll quickly show you where we're going to, well, not where we're going to now, but the track that is confronting us now, which doesn't look too bad to start with, but I just know it's gonna get bad, <laughs> like yesterday's. Anyway, we keep battling on. <laughs> Falls do, <deep>, Melvin. <laughs> Ta -ta. Well, ABS off. And here we go again. At this point the malaria tablets really weren't agreeing with me and it wasn't until a little bit later on in, into our adventure that I discovered that taking them with food slightly later in the day uh, improved the situation for myself. GoPro won't show. <laughs> but um, it is quite steep. And when you're not feeling it today as I'm not, not feeling too good for whatever reason. And I've got the worst front tire on possible for this, but that's my fault. So I coped with it yesterday, so I'll cope with it today. And uh, now you start to get an idea of how and why this becomes quite tiring when you've got 250 kilometres of terrain to cover. Oh, part the fun! Yeah, just talking on the GoPro, mate. Nice, there we go. So I'll switch off and then I can concentrate. Try to switch off. You choose, you spotted them. No, turn it around. So, negative camera. It's alright, I can see him. Let's get this and put the side stand there. Where's the bread? Where's the bread? Paul's in his best negotiating skills at the moment. Let's go and see how it's going. How are you doing, Paul? Brad, yeah. you just now need tomato. Okay, you see, one, two, three. This one, send me. Yeah. Send me this one. Send me. Right. See, you know? Thank you. All right. Yeah. Okay. Tomatoes. Where? Not here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just having a rip you off twice. <laughs> so we're now walking up for some tomatoes. So we then made our way along a track and uh, found a nice little sh sheltered area uh, out of the sun. 
where um, Paul put his um, chef's hat on and made some delicious, I think they were tomato and bread sandwiches. <clears throat> this is our first night in Guinea Conakry. Madness. The national team has won a football game in this village called Tundra or Tundra. It's just madness outside. In our lovely digs, uh, Guinea, Conakry. It's my birthday today, and I'm actually 59. Hurrah! And I'm in the, uh, let's just say, not the most nicest joints in the world, but hey, there you go. Um, so, a uh, quick one on the fuel situation in Guinea. We're still not sure. We get missing calls. So, uh, we fueled up as follows. So, on the back, we got two six litre. Um, Desert Fox fuel bladders. They only filled five for the expansion. Then we've got uh, fuel there, and smaller fuel there. Yeah. Fuel here, and another fuel there. And we have the auxiliary uh, camel and fuel tank, as well as the normal fuel tank. And then have another little fuel there and on Paul's bike besides the usual yeah full of fuels stuffed in tires so uh, hopefully if there are fuel shortages in uh, Guinea we'll have enough to get ourselves to Conakry to the embassy at Cote d'Ivoire and hope to find a little bit of more fuel to get out well the rooms are getting more and more basic bedroom with spa slippers, but just two different sizes and two odd ones. And then lovely curtains that don't fit. Bathroom with a guest soap, a bath. I think that's a boat wash and that might be a shower if it works. I don't know what the lacy thing is hanging up there. Now some of you may be asking, what is going on here? Well, quite simply, the mosquitoes were that numerous in number on this first night in Guinea Conakry that um, I decided that the only comfortablest way to sleep was to set up the inner tent on top of the bed and uh, I slept on top of the sleeping bag inside that I actually had quite a pleasant night's sleep knowing that the little mites couldn't get to me but I could still hear them buzzing around outside so a reasonably comfortable evening if if and if it was a bit noisy they're all back not bad bats in guinea Thousands of, well, hundreds. Whilst admiring the bats, little did we know that uh, shortly after having set off, uh, making our way to a uh, local town in Guinea, Conakry, uh, we were looking for um, a bank uh, with a potential cash till to try and get some more local currency um, and uh, things took a, a slight turn for the worse should we say might be some at the, some at the place where we're going are you with me?
Hello? Money. Money? Yeah. Pro Pro. Euro yeah. dollar. Yeah. Pro Pro. Where's yeah. the money? Sorry, turn on the English. Yeah. English. Why? English. Why you not? You pay. For what? Uh. For what? English. Yeah, pay for what? Uh. Uh. Pay, pay for what? 100 rupees, 200. I know, I'm looking for the bank. Bank? Yes. No, bank. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll park up down there then and then I can sort it out. Bank not open, no bank. Bank, yeah. Uh, no, I can't. Bank. Yeah, no. We're looking bank. for a bank. Okay. We turn around and go back. Okay. Thank you. Bank. Got to turn around down there. Hey. Keep, keep going, Paul. No, get out of dodge, you ready? No. You just saying give me money and that was it. Yeah, you with me? I can't see you. Slavic love on, on the move and then I realised that these severe storm drains on the right it probably wasn't a good idea just in case We started to figure out really the best way to deal with these unofficial or or official road checks, and that was pretty much just to just keep going straight through and ignore them. Finally, we arrived at our stopover point at the end of the day um, I'm in Mid Guinea, um, just west of Kindia, and uh, I finally got to have a uh, birthday beer courtesy of Paul. You can.
ended this one night as well. They ended up travelling up at night trying to find somewhere. 